Hello, welcome to the part one of our Introduction to Operations Research Lecture. In this lecture, we will be talking about the history of operations research, operations research today, modeling in operations research, the mathematical techniques for operations research, the different phases of operations research study, and the structure of mathematical models. So let's begin. So what is operations research? Operations research is the application of methods of science to complex problems arising in the direction and management of large number of men, machines, materials and money, in industry, business, government, and defense. Also, operations research is the application of scientific methods, techniques, and tools to the problems involving the operations of a system so as to provide those in control of the system with optimum solution to the problem. Operations research can be traced back to World War II, when a group of scientists was hired by the government of England in order to research on the military operations of the English military. So basically, the group of scientists wanted to identify or wanted to optimize their radar operation and also their bomber operation. With the success of the English group of scientists, the Americans also hired their own group of scientists in order to research on complex logistical problems, invention of new flight patterns, planning sea mining, and effective utilization of electronic equipment. Both countries really used up their group of scientists and was able to profit in, the, in their operations for the military. With the success of the military operations, the industry then followed in using operations research. This is to sought out solutions to their complex executive type problems, to serve the overall objectives of their organizations, and utilization of the effective tools. The first mathematical technique in operations research is called the simplex method of the linear programming. This was created by George B. Danzig in his dissertation or his PhD thesis. To give you a little story, while George B. Danzig was a PhD student, he came in late to one of his classes. As he came in, he saw different problems that was written by his professor on the board, and he thought these are his homeworks. He wrote them all down, and then, by the next meeting, he answered two, if I'm not mistaken, out of the three problems. But then, he didn't realize that these are actually not the homeworks, but these are actually mathematical problems which have not been solved yet. And when his professor or his advisor saw these, they realized that he was able to come up one of the best solution in solving linear programs, and that is the simplex method. And then these homeworks became his dissertation or his PhD thesis. Operations research today is not only used by military, but also been used in business applications, in hospitals, in financial institutions, libraries, city planning, transportation systems, and even crime investigations. So what are the different models in operations research? First, we have iconic models. Iconic models are basically prototypes or real-life samples of what the real-life problem is. For example, a toy plane. A toy plane is an iconic model of the real plane, which is a very big one. And since we wanted only to play on a smaller version, then we create a toy plane. This is an iconic model. Another model is the analog models. Analog models are kind of abstract representation of a real system. For example, graphs. And then we have symbolic or mathematical model. An LP or a linear program, which is written here, is an example of a mathematical model. It basically models the real system through mathematical equations and mathematical functions. Then with the advancement of technology, there are two other models which have been created currently. One is heuristics and the other one is simulation. Heuristics is basically rule of thumb or other techniques which have not been used before and may be used or may be useful in the future. Those are heuristics. For example, in different problems on scheduling, one heuristic would be to schedule first those with shortest processing time. That is a heuristic. Then simulation models are digital representations 
which imitate the behavior of a system using a digital computer. The statistics describing the different measures of performance of the system are accumulated as the simulator advances on the computer. So what are the mathematical techniques for operations research? We have the following. Linear programming or LP. Then we also have dynamic programming. Then we have nonlinear programming, stochastic programming, and also integer programming. As we go through our different lectures, we will be talking about each one of them in depth. For now, we will focus on linear programming. So what are the different phases in order to do operations research study? First, we have to define the problem. This is very crucial and very critical. We have to understand the problem at its core in order for us to know what we want to solve and know what kind of problems we will encounter in the future. Then we have the construction of the model. This is the part where we're going to use mathematical models in order to replicate our real system. So this is the part where we construct our linear program or our integer program. Then we have the solution of the model. This part is basically solving our model that we constructed from the previous stage. Then we have the validation of the model. Validation of the model is basically to validate if our solution to the model is actually correct. This is basically done through implementing our solution to a prototype system. Then we have the implementation of the final results, where we have to implement our solutions to the real system. Now we will talk about the structure of mathematical models. This is an example of a linear program, and a linear program is composed of the following elements. Each element will be explained individually on the part two of our lecture. First, we have the objective function. Then we have decision variables, and then the different parameters and the different constraints. Again, we have an objective function, we have decision variables, we have the different parameters, and then the set of constraints. So that ends our lecture for today. Tune in for the part two. This is Bontley for DC Ranilia. Thank you very much for watching.